Hello, my friends. Uh, I'm here again with my good friend, Beth English. And today we're going to talk about how to optimize your artist website to the new market that's out there because of COVID-19. So it's going to be a great conversation and we're going to have a lot of fun kind of unpacking that idea. But before we do that, Beth, how are you today? Good to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I think you've got a great topic today. I think that everyone's going to be excited to hear about what you have to say. So oh, Awesome. I think it's going to be fun. And you and I, we have been doing these uh, kind of uh, conversations back and forth for the last few weeks. I don't know how many uh, already. I think this is maybe eight or nine or 10. I don't know. No, this is our 13th episode. Oh, <laughs> 13th episode. Okay, good. <laughs> you have a good memory. Good. Awesome. <laughs> well, and our friends, for our friends who do not know us, uh, you know, I'm here based in Chicago. Where are you at, uh, Beth? Well, I am from Nashville, Tennessee, but right now I'm living in Rio Frio, Texas. And so I'm just working virtually, running my community, the Nashville Creative Group, and I'm hoping to get back there real soon. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, how the, pretty much the, not only the art market, but all the markets have changed because of COVID-19 as the world continues to evolve. I remember, you know, meeting people before this whole COVID-19 that said, well, you know, I don't buy anything online. I don't like buying things online, uh, you know, or, or, or artists who said, you know, people don't like to buy art online. They have to see it first and so on. Right. Well, you know, fast forward not to what just happened in the last few uh, weeks and months. And uh, I don't think I have now heard anyone says I don't buy things online actually we everybody learned if they didn't do it before how to buy things online how to do grocery shopping online how to you know buy things online now they're more at home uh, art sales actually are very strong too so it is very interesting right how the world kind of has pushed this you know online sale into a, a forefront versus a back end yeah I mean we need to connect with people virtually and that includes our art and our storefronts whether yeah. you know so yeah a lot of people in my community have been wondering what's best this platform that platform like the conversation about selling art online has definitely been a big one we've been having right and i think you know as we all kind of transition i like to uh, always look at what the big galleries are doing for example mm -hmm. you know what moves are they doing because that also tells you you know they have a big team they're that working uh with many people uh, to make the best uh, experience for that. So I, I've noticed that a lot of the big galleries, for example, instead of calling their shows online show or online exhibit, they're calling it viewing rooms. Mm -hmm. So you'll find a lot of the big name galleries, you know, out there that they have now viewing rooms. So a viewing room pretty much, it's, a, it's not just a website with a bunch of thumbnails, but actually more of an online experience, which I actually really enjoy, you know, switching from, Okay, here's an index of a lot of, of artwork on a website. Now, a viewing room is almost like a more in-depth, uh, which could be a solo show or could be a group show in which you have, you know, a really long page because scrolling, it doesn't really matter anymore. You know, uh, it's okay to, to create long pages and gives you, for example, um, you know, the artwork and then a picture of the artist in their studio and then a little bit of a bio and then maybe a quote from the artist and then you keep scrolling down and then you see some three or four artworks that are for sale and then you keep scrolling down and now you see a video and then you keep scrolling. So it gives you like this more experiential way of looking at art and I'm finding that to be actually very good. I don't know if you yeah. have seen any of those. Yeah, I think showing art in that way is a great idea because you know, when we make buying decisions, it's emotionally first. Right. And it's a lot more intriguing to be brought in through video and through storytelling to understand the work better than just say something that's just a two dimensional, you know, right. listing with a price and that's it, you know? So it's, okay. it's a great idea. Any way you can humanize the buying experience in a way virtually, I think you're going to appeal to people's emotions. Yeah, I love that what you say, you know, kind of humanize it because in one, actually in one of the exhibits, I, uh, exhibits I was looking online in a viewing room from uh, White Cube Gallery, I believe it was. Um, as I was scrolling, I saw one of the artworks that they actually took a picture with the artwork on a table mm -hmm. and took a picture, a side view, so you could see the, the, uh, the depth of the mm -hmm. artwork. You can see a close-up proximity of the texture. And in an angle, like you almost like you're going and looking in it 
on the table. So, mm-hmm. as you said, you know, it kind of gives you this this uh, experience that calls you in to look at it closer because we are all far away. Nobody can go to art fairs right now. Galleries are not going to art fairs like they used to. Or people go and ask questions and tell me more about this or that. Let me see it up close. So they're kind of trying to emulate that into their websites. And I thought that was fascinating. Um, and they're looking at the main galleries doing that. And then I started thinking, how can we as artists, you know, do similar things where we can optimize our websites, you know, for for the now, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of just an index of here's all my artwork, but maybe we can start creating our own, you know, kind of a virtual spaces or viewing rooms where, um, you know, if I have a new body of work, you know, do something similar, you know, some um, almost like a self curating or own body of work that we want to present versus just adding a bunch of thumbnails like everything else. So I don't know, how do you like that idea? I mean, it's a great idea. Any way you can bring story into uh, the conversation, I think, is how you're going to create connection. And so even if that's an artist showing behind the scenes of what it's like during the process of creating the art, maybe where they get their inspiration and they can create a video about that so that people are introduced to the work knowing beforehand, well, how was it made and why was it made? And then that's how they can get drawn in to the individual pieces of art through that story. So the better we are at telling our story, the better we are going to be connecting with our customers. Totally right. Totally agree. And and then the next aspect of, of that is that uh, some of the benefits is that then you will have a URL that is specific to that viewing room, right? Mm-hmm. Or that you know, virtual space for that specific body of work. And it, you don't have to have 20 of them. It could be just five. I went to one, I remember what the gallery was. It was only like three artworks, but they did a really nice long page where, you know, they show the artwork. And then another one was like a, a process on how the artist was working on it. And then you kept scrolling and there was a quote and then you kept scrolling. And then there was, for example, a very close detail of a section of the artwork. And then you scroll and then another very close detail. So it was an experience that you don't have to click and see it bigger. You just you were just looking at it already big as you scroll. Mm-hmm. Um, so any artist can do that. You know, we can take our website, create a new page, and do you know maybe your last five pieces that you worked on, something like that. Yeah, designing your site I think is really important because people are experiencing or using our tools now differently. So that means the design has to be right. differently. So we have to create more than just a portfolio page and more of a sales page. And like you said, there was only a few pieces of art for sale, but that makes sense. Have you seen a sales page for a digital course? I mean, it can go on and on and on and on for just, you know, a a simple course and just one course you're seeing testimonials, you're seeing what you're going to get from it, you know? And I think the more that we think about how are we selling our art is going to help us sell more of it. If we start to connect the dots and connect our collectors with the reasons why they want to buy from us in the first place. And sometimes we don't know that. And it's important to always ask questions, to talk to our collectors, have relationships with them and understand why people are buying our works so that we can continue that conversation and make that at the forefront of how we um, want to connect with new buyers because they need to know that information right. right away. Exactly. And I think your point to the last part, which I really want to talk about is, once the person is there, making it really easy for them to either purchase or inquire, right? And this will be look this will look different to every artist. You know, there are some works that are easy to put for sale online because you know you can figure out the shipping, and it's it's a really easy to just add the sh- the buy now, right? Or shop buy now button, and it's a, it's a easy transaction. There are other pieces, you know, maybe a really large painting or like what you have behind you, right? That might be really difficult. Yeah. To just put a, a a shipping you know method and things like that because it's larger it might need to be created you know all those things but at least you can have an inquire button where people can just inquire you know after they experience that work uh, or that uh, online space then have always places where you can uh, interact with the with the customer with the buyer either, either where they can inquire or they can purchase and Again, even I've been following some of these big galleries, which are now also something that you didn't see that before just last year is now many of them are now being more transparent in their pricing. And now they're including prices mm-hmm. in the artwork where before, even if it's a you know $100,000 work, a lot of them are now starting to 
uh, adding that up. Before it was a mystery. You know, you never had pricing in a big gallery website. Now many of them are beginning to kind of be more transparent on that. And again, so that, that tells you that people want to know, right? The, the top collectors mm. are, are, are looking for that transparency in many ways. So, you know, as an artist, I think, again, being able to create that uh, sense of this is something you can get right away or you can easily inquire about it and then make it easy for that person. If that person has to go and click here and there and three other things or go to your contact page, send your full message, forget it. <laughs> You're going to lose them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So with that, I want to wrap it up as we come to the end of uh, this uh, quick conversation and kind of invite our friends to uh, maybe adapt this idea of the, you know, a viewing room. I know I'm going to do it in my website. I'm kind of starting to think about ideas, which words mm -hmm. I want to put together and do that probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, if, if maybe for friends, if they have done that or they are doing something like that, I would love to hear, and I'm sure you'd love to hear too, maybe they can share a link to your website or your art page where you have something similar to a viewing room i would love to see what you're doing yeah i'd love to see it too because i think now we're we're experimenting with so many different ideas about what could possibly work that people might be stumbling upon uh solutions that they've been looking for for a really long time and they're finally just now working but yeah i'm sure a lot of people are doing a lot of different things and uh, the more we can learn from each other the better right exactly and uh well why don't we tell our friends where they can they find us both on the website and online uh, Beth, where can we find you? Yeah, you guys can find me at um, on Instagram and Facebook at Beth English. And my website's BethEnglish.com. And my last name's spelled I-N-G-L-I-S-H. Excellent. And you guys can find me online on my website at SergioGomezOnline.com. Check it out. You can sign up there. Also, if you want to receive my emails, which I would send one once I have my first viewing room so people can check it out. Yeah. And also on Instagram at Sergio Gomez Art. So Beth, like usual, super happy to see you again. And have Me this too. chat with you. Thanks, you guys. Goodbye, everybody. See you later. Bye.